Hi, I have created this generative piece of piano music yesterday with Ableton Live. Let's listen to it. Okay, but how the heck did I do it? I'm Adam from More Than Silence, and please consider to subscribe if you are interested in generative music or in modular synthesis and modular synth music. I'm going to walk you through step by step how to make a generative piece of piano music like this using only Ableton's built in MIDI effects, instruments, and LFOs actually. So, let's get started. First of all, if you can see, I have separated the MIDI channels and the instrument channels. That's because I'm using a lot of LFOs uh, to modulate or to control stuff here, so it was more clear for me in this arrangement. Let's get started uh, with the piano, with the grand piano, which is Ableton's built-in piano. And uh, I have just uh, attached a few LFOs uh, with random signals to humanize it. So as you can see, I have attached an LFO to the attack, to the reverb, and to the glue uh, of the grand piano. And of course, uh, in a scale uh, that's moderate, so that's uh, not too out of the grid, and I have put the smooth to 100%, uh, the rate to 1%, and I have offset it and uh, I have uh, played with the depth and uh, that's why the piano feels like uh, more human, like it was played by a real person and not by a computer. I did the same on the right hand channel as well. So let's get move to the MIDI effects uh, and the melody progression because I think it's more interesting. Okay, the left hand is basically playing a C2 note in a four bar sequence uh, with an interval on the second one. And the right hand plays a five bar sequence with several shorter intervals. And that's because I didn't want the loops uh, to, to start, to always start at the same time. So they overlap and uh, they have this uh, generative uh, effect, which was actually uh, found out by Brian Eno, the father of generative music and the father of ambient music. The right hand is playing a three C note, so it's one octave higher uh, than the left hand, which is C2. Okay, I'm going to switch off all the effects, the MIDI effects, on the left hand and listen to it without any effects. This is going to sound like this. Okay. The chords are not switched out because it's controlled by an LFO and it's high now. I'm going to wait for it to become low, so we will hear the C2 note in itself. Okay, it should work now. Yeah. So, this is a C2 note. And I'm using a pitch controlled by this LFO to create random notes. And the reason why I'm using an LFO with a little jitter here is because I want 
uh, the melody to return from time to time to the same two notes, the lowest and the highest end of this sine wave. But I'm using jitter because I don't want them all the time to play uh, the same two notes. I scale this to a major uh, pentatonic scale and uh, that's responsible basically for the transpositions. After that I have two uh, different uh, MIDI effects here. An arpeggiator and uh, a chord player, sorry, it's uh, actually it should be called chords and uh, I'm controlling them with those LFOs to switch on and off and uh, I just re-triggered them sorry, reset them so the, the second phase is 50% higher than the first phase, so they are changing in phase, but they are the same, so it's, it was a copy and paste. And uh, it makes uh, the one switch off when the other one is switched on. So it's either the chord player or either the arpeggiator. And the chord player and the arpeggiator has the same distance on the notes. So the one is playing the chord, the other one is playing uh, the separate notes of the same chords. After that, I have applied an LFO so the whole thing is uh, is scaled in a major scale and after that there's a minor scale because I sometimes want to switch between major and minor scales to correspond uh, to the dynamics of Western music. So I've applied this uh, square wave uh, LFO to the device on switch of the minor chord. So it switches on and off and when it's on of course it plays the minor scale when it's off it plays the major scale. Now it's the minor. Now it's the arpeggiator. And I think it's in the major chord. Yeah, because it was off. And after that I have applied a random velocity uh, between those values uh, 62 and 90 just to give it a more human feeling. Okay, that's for the left hand. Let's move on to the right hand. Okay, so the right hand has the same idea as the left hand, so regarding pitch, it plays random notes, which are scaled uh, in a sort of a major pentatonic scale, uh, with an F actually, but I think I did that, uh, yeah, I did that uh, on the left hand as well, so it uh, also includes uh, an F note. And after that, it goes uh, to an arpeggiator, which go to uh, two different velocity devices. And after that, the whole thing is quantized in a major pentatonic scale, because that goes really well uh, with both major and minor scales. And it has a random velocity just to humanize it. And uh, the trick here is uh, that the arpeggiator's rate is controlled by an LFO. It plays between one third and one twelfth. And it's controlled by, I think, this LFO, LFO style, 
no, sorry, the style applies to the style. So it plays between random and random up. So sometimes uh, it's uh, a random uh, chord note. So sometimes it plays random chord notes. Sometimes it goes uh, upwards like a regular arpeggiator. And uh, the other one, the rate controls uh, the rate. So it plays between one third and one twelfth. And I have the two velocity uh, devices to let only certain sounds uh, through because they are on gate mode and the first one is set to completely random and the second one uh, is controlled by the range so it just lets out uh, certain sounds and it omits others uh, that's the basic idea of a Bernoulli gate, if you are familiar with the term in modular synthesis. Uh, mutable instruments uh, have a very cool Bernoulli gate uh, kind of module, uh, which is called branches. I really love that I have this physical module and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very uh, interesting how it works. It basically uh, flips a coin whether a sound should come out or not. And as I just told, it's all in a major pentatonic scale because it applies well uh, with both major and minor scales and it's humanized by this velocity. So, let's listen to the whole thing uh, together again. You can leave it like that and listen to it for hours or you can record it and edit it according to your taste. It really depends on you. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you are interested in generative music or in modular music, please consider to subscribe to my channel. Have a nice day! Oh yeah, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will try to uh, answer them as soon as I can.